Assalamu alaikum and happy Eid. Uh, welcome to the program. We're continuing to celebrate Eid. Uh, this is the end of the uh, month of Ramadan. Uh, so this is a great time of celebration. We will continue our discussions looking at Eid celebrations from across different parts of the Muslim world. We have been joined by two brothers from Asian countries. Uh, one is in Southeast Asia, uh, Brother uh, Lukman Hakim from Indonesia, yes. uh, and also a brother from Bangladesh, Abibur Rahman. Assalamu yes. alaikum to you both and welcome to the program. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you so much. Wow, I am impressed with your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. So are these traditional clothes from your countries? Uh, yes. Hmm. yes. All right, I'll start with on my right with Brother Lukman. Uh, what about the, the sisters? Uh, what do they uh, typically wear on the Eid uh, day? And talk about the prayer. Uh, what time uh, earlier we heard that the prayers will vary uh, from being very early, as early as 5.30 a.m., some as late as 9 a.m. What about in Indonesia? And what about the clothing that uh, the brothers and sisters wear? Uh, first of all, I would like to say for all of you, uh, happy Eid, Eid and Said. Mm, thank you. And if we are going to talk about player, but actually I would like to talk about the term of Eid al-Fitri in our country because it seems very different if we compare with another country. In our country, we say Eid al-Fitri Lebaran. And Lebaran actually is sort of alculturation between Javanese tradition and Islamic tradition. Mm. For, for instance, I'm from Java. Mm -hmm. Java sort of name of the tribe, the big tribe in our country. Mm -hmm. When Islam came to our country, mm -hmm. we already have the tradition, but we accept Islam. Mm. So we have sort of special tradition. It's sort of alculturation between Javanese tradition and is Islamic tradition. So we say lebar, lebaran. Lebaran uh, simply means, I mean, finish. I will finish. Uh, finish. It means that when we are going to celebrate it, it means that we already finish the fasting in mm -hmm. the month of, of mm -hmm. Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So it is time that we can rejoice, we can be happy, yes. we can be celebrating yes. this Eid before we has been trained in the holy month of Ramadan mm -hmm. after we finish doing fasting. Mm. So, so Lebaran is the term that we often use in our country instead of Eid al-Fitri. Although we understand also Arabic term Eid al-Fitri, but many people use two terms, whether it is Lebaran and also Eid al-Fitri. And by the way, I would like to say that actually Indonesia is considered the largest Muslim uh, in the world. That's right. We are number one compared to... More than 250 million, is that yes, correct? Yes, 250 million. So we are Muslims. Yes, <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we are number one <laughs> after the inspiration mm. of Pakistan uh, from uh, India. Mm -hmm. We became the number one. Mm. So Indonesia is considered the largest Islamic country in the world. In the world, yeah. So if we are going to talk about the player, because as uh, we just discussed about the Islamic school in the first segment. So actually South Asian people, uh, South Asian Muslim, we follow the school of Shafi'i. Mm -hmm. So Shafi'i school is the school that we follow. So mm -hmm. if we are going to talk about the uh, eight player, mm -hmm. we start uh, performing eight, fly, eight, eight player in the early morning. It's eight for about six or seven a.m. Okay. So, so we, we, we start, I mean, uh, eight player, and then we came back to our home, and we prepare some delicious food, mm. and then we uh, try to enjoy this food with all of members yeah. of yeah. the family. I, I want to ask you, if I can, mm. uh, a question about the geography of Indonesia. I, I understand that 
it's comprised of 17,000 islands, is that correct? And yes. It, is all of that in one time zone or are there multiple time zones in, in Indonesia? No, actually time is divided into two times. Okay. There is what we call, uh, I mean, East Indonesia yeah. and West Indonesia because uh, I'm from Java, so my time is West uh, Indonesia okay. of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so d does the majority <laughs> of the country pray uh, according to the time that uh, Java observes, or w where where is the majority on the east or west? Uh, I think in the, in, in the west. In the west. Yes. Okay. So yes. this is on Java time. Yes. All right. Mm. And, and I want to ask you more about these delicious foods uh, okay. that you eat. Okay. But uh, we'll go to uh, Bangladesh next, uh, bro brother Ab Habibur. Uh, uh, Bangladesh is also a very populous Muslim Please. country. Yes. Is it the majority religion in uh, in the country in Bangladesh? Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulihi al-kareem. First, I would like to <laughs> give all of you the happy Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Uh, uh, in my country, we uh, greet the Eid to each other, mm -hmm. like uh, we say Eid Mubarak. Mm. And in, uh, I got in Arabian country, they say uh, Eid Sa'id, Kullu Am, Wa Antum Bi Khair. Uh, by the way, uh, today w we have Eid here, but uh, the problem in my country, Bangladesh, is different. Like today, Eid here, but in my country, tomorrow, not today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is tomorrow, not today. I see. So uh, <laughs> This I, I, is the Bangladesh, very different. Yeah. <laughs> 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 About population, majority, uh, majority population are Muslims, like... Uh, uh, 90% Muslim in Bangladesh and uh, Muslim 150 or 60 million Muslims mm -hmm. in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's quite a bit. So, so the, <coughs> the Bangladeshis, if I can make fun of the Bangladeshi yes. Muslims, it's like when Mama or Baba and you, <laughs> they give you a sweet, right? And you have one of the brothers or sisters is going to hold back on the sweet, and everybody <laughs> else eats it. And then after it's finished, he pulls his out. Yeah, exactly. This it's is what the Bangladeshi like in terms yeah. of celebrating. Yeah. You, you hold back a day. <laughs> uh, so we, we appreciate uh, helping to keep the spirit of Eid yes. alive. Uh, a day, even okay, a day after. Uh, let, yeah. let me talk about how we welcome Eid in our country. Mm. After finish the Ramadan, the last night before Eid, the Eid night before Eid, the night, I mean, uh, after night we're gonna celebrate the Eid. The, this night, the uh, many groups of children, mm. they have many groups, and they, after Maghrib, after prayer, they uh, started to watching the moon, see the moon, right. the new moon. Uh, they can see one much after the sea when the sea they are very happy yeah. and they some of them they say other and they uh, means they looking very happy and they they enjoying with mm -hmm. this moon mm -hmm. then many of them they uh, uh, like uh, slogan like say this uh, loudly they say something uh, uh, very happily and uh, after that uh, at night, most of them uh, in the city they don't sleep because of uh, uh, Eid. Tomorrow Eid, they're gonna we're gonna celebrate Eid, so they so, cannot. So the sleep. night before, yeah, the yeah, families night, are, they stay <laughs> up. Yeah. Uh, uh, during this time of staying up, uh, what is the situation like? Do you sit with your families? Do you read Quran? Do you pray? How do you spend the time the night before Eid, going into Eid? Uh, in city, if I. Uh, go to city. You uh, look there. Young generation, mm -hmm. young generation. They don't sleep. They just enjoy. They go to uh, the place and they make the group and uh, they enjoy that just by themselves. Yeah. And if you go to the village, uh, they just uh, mm, at night after ten o'clock maybe they go to sleep. But after Fajr, after Fajr, they started to uh, uh, saying the. Uh, takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Yes. This takbir, the mm. after Fajr, they mm -hmm. started to say the takbir in mosque. Mm. So, uh, like uh, this, uh, this moment is very, very wonderful. Wonderful. Everyone feeling we, go, oh, we are in Eid and we really, uh, we really 
means feel this really Eid is here. Yeah. But I can't Egypt. I'm here uh, for five, four years like that. I didn't feel we are having Eid here or not. <laughs> really, I didn't feel. One day you'll feel. <laughs> well, I think. <laughs> Can I, I, I want to ask Brother Abdul, please <laughs> share another song with us. Help Brother Abibor feel yes. the Eid here in Probably Egypt. <laughs> Okay, I think I'll go with uh, Inshallah uh, song. Every time you feel like you cannot go on, you feel so lost and that you're so alone. All you see is night and darkness all around. You feel so helpless, you can't see which way to go. Don't despair and never lose hope Cause Allah is always by your side Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah You'll find the way Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah, Insha'Allah You'll find the way Every time you commit one more mistake You feel you can't repent and it's way too late You're so confused, wrong decisions you have made Count your mind and your heart is full of shame Don't despair and never lose hope Cause Allah is always by your side Insha'Allah 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 You'll find the way Insha'Allah 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 You'll find the way Turn to Allah He's never far away Put your trust in Him Raise your hand and pray Oh yeah Allah Guide my steps, don't let me go astray You're the only one You're the only one that showed me the way Showed me the way Showed me the way Insha'Allah 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 You'll find the way Insha'Allah 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 You'll find the way Amin. 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 Well done. <laughs> yeah, very Amin. nice. Again, he's he's got a very beautiful voice. voice. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. You so much. yeah. So, what about that song? Where does that come from? Um, it's by uh, Meher Zain. He's uh, a Lebanese uh, singer. Hmm. Uh, I think he lives in uh, Britain for for so long, so he got mm -hmm. the language, and mm -hmm. he also sings in. Turkey and, uh, uh, and sings in a lot of other uh, mm. languages. Ar Arabic too. Can sing Arabic yes, too. yes, he's 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 quite uh, fascinating. I, I have caught his name before. <coughs> Maher uh, Zain. Yeah, yes. I, his his name does sound familiar to me. Maher Zain is famous. In yeah, so he, uh, yeah, he's, Islamic song. Yeah, mm. he's he's also uh, the uh, the same singer of the first song I uh, ah, previously saw. Uh, okay, singed. Mm. Uh, that's it. He's 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 awesome. I hmm. think. Hmm. When I listen to you saying it, um, uh, feels like dua, like yes. you're making a, a yes. small yes. prayer. Yes, prayer indeed. To yes, Allah. indeed. Yeah, so thank you again for sharing. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so uh, brother uh, mm -hmm. Habibur, before the song, uh, <laughs> you were telling us about uh, Bangladesh, but I, I do want to hear. Brother Lukman, tell us more about these foods that you talked about. You said after the prayer, you go back home to eat delicious food. What kinds of foods do you eat? 
talking about food is very beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I <Yeah>. got hungry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, in Idul Fitri, we have a lot of kind of food mm. that going to be served. But I would like to talk about the ketupat because ketupat has philosophical meaning to interpret. I mean. Uh, Idul Fitri to Indonesian people. Mm -hmm. Ketupat is sort of it's rice, and then we put this rice in the in the coconut palms, mm. just just like that. Mm -hmm. But this, I mean, food has philosophical meaning to 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 for Indonesian people. The philosophical meaning of this food is that, I mean, I mean the the palms of co co of coconut mm -hmm. uh, it's mean that it's like the sin that we already commit mm -hmm. during our life mm -hmm. and then the rice y you know that the color of rice is white white yeah it's mean that sort of deliverance from error mm -hmm. so it's mean that when we finish our fasting we will be pure yeah sort of when you eat this food mm -hmm. it mean that you go to your purity and mm -hmm. then you become pure as the prophet is said. Is this a, a Java tradition? Yes, Java tradition. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in the t uh, tradition of the prophet, the mm -hmm. prophet ever said, Man soma Ramadona iman and wahdi saban wafira lahu ma taqaddama min dan mi. Whoever fasts in the month of, of Ramadan with iman and hoping the great reward from Allah, all his fast sin will be forgiven mm. so based on the tradition it's sort of i mean japanese people ha, ha, uh, i mean believe from this tradition and then they try to elaborate this tradition based on their tradition yeah yeah, yeah i i think this is a mm. great example mm. brothers mm. of <coughs> how islam respects all of these things that we're hearing, yes. it respects the, the culture of the people. Mm. Yes, uh, Islam is not contradicting to the culture. Right. For instance, I'm, I, I'm, I can be totally Muslim and I can be totally Japanese people. Mm. And all of our right. brothers, I think, agree with this statement. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Uh, you know, uh, coming from the United States yes. uh, with Native American ancestors and African ancestors, mm. uh, the experience uh, by church missionaries was a bit different. Mm. You know, the existing culture, language, name, all of the experience, uh, there was a complete lack of regard and respect for culture. And so this is a great aspect in Islam mm. to allow people to maintain their cultural, ethnic I identity and even keep it, to infuse it with uh, mm. the Islamic practice on the Eid celebration. Mm. Oh, see, uh, <coughs> there is one point, Mr. Ali. See, the issue <coughs> of diversity in culture mm. is a sign of uh, existence of Almighty Allah. Yes. That He is the Alpha and Omega. Mm. That uh, a verse in Holy Quran says that had Almighty Allah wished, He would have created people the same, to look alike, to have the same culture, the way of speaking, dressing, and so on. But he created them into different colors, different diversities in culture, in, in looks, you yes. know, in the way they yes. talk and whatever, so that they can know each other. Yeah. So he created them into nations. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. It's a beauty. So this mm. is colorful. It's colorful and it's beautiful. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You, you. you got the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. we, we have another before. Hold your, don't lose your idea. Okay. We have another report to look at. This report is going to be ask, uh, answering the question, how should we as Muslims celebrate the Eid celebration? We'll take a look at this and then come back with Brother Abdu. We wish you a happy Eid. Promise Allah that this Eid, we will not engage in that which will earn the wrath of Allah or make him displeased with us. The reason is, as soon as we see the moon, two things happen. One is Ramadan comes to an end. That is also very sad. Eid is declared. Eid is declared that is something happy because we deserve a day of rejoicing after so much of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, intense worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But the second thing that happens, my brothers and sisters, those devils who were, that were tied prior to Ramadan, they are released. Subhanallah. And this is why, may Allah protect us from the devil. On the day of Eid, many people without knowing or sometimes knowingly, they start to commit sins that displease Allah. Yet it is the day of pleasure, the day to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the clothing that we are wearing on the day of Eid, especially when it comes to our sisters, let us make sure that it is cut in a way that will please Allah. It is His day. It is His day. Whatever we plan to do on that day, we should never plan to do anything that will displease Allah. Look, my brothers and sisters, every time there is a happy occasion, we celebrate it by increasing the acts of worship. So I explain to you when it comes to marriage, what a happy occasion. We have an extra khutbah. When it comes to Jumu'ah, what a happy occasion. We have a khutbah. That is something that is not there on other days. When it comes to Eid, the happiness of a Muslim is shown by extra worship. So we have Salatul Eid. We have an extra prayer on that particular day. This is how we as believers show our happiness and gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying Him more, by doing things that will please Him. Look at the other Eid that we will be having inshallah in approximately two and a half months from now. We find the Eid where we will be sacrificing. That is an extra act of worship for the sake of Allah. This is how we declare our happiness. We have never been taught to declare our happiness by doing that which will displease Allah. We have meetings with the opposite sex on the day of Eid to go back and do whatever we did not do in the month of Ramadan in terms of sin. Is that what Eid is all about? Sometimes we become involved in gluttony to the degree that we eat as though we are doing qada of what we have missed in the month of Ramadan. If that is the case, we have missed the point. It is a day of eating, but it is not a day of gluttony. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is not a day when we are supposed to eat until we get sick. That is not Eid. Eid is a day when we are conscious of Allah. We thank Him for having given us a beautiful season and having come out with the forgiveness. This is why my brothers and sisters, are you aware of the fact that the eve of the Eid, once the moon is sighted, it is known as Laylatul Ja'iza. It is known as the eve of prize giving. And this is why in one narration, the Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls out to His angels on that eve and He asks them, what do you think the reward of a slave who has fulfilled his job is? They will say, Oh our Lord, it is to be given what he was promised. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, All my worshippers who have fasted for me, who have prayed for me, O oh my angels, I let you bear witness that I have forgiven them completely. It is the night of forgiveness when the prizes are given. You know, a child who has been to the school through the year and worked very hard is a child that deserves the prize. And there will be a night where that prize is actually given to the child, making the child feel happy. What about the prize dished out by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And that is forgiveness and freedom from Jahannam. If I were to die now, I have no hope but in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah have mercy on myself and yourselves. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to Eid Times. We're continuing to celebrate the Eid celebration. We appreciate Mufti Mink. Uh, in this short uh, report helping us to understand and remember he's not giving us anything that we don't already know but it's a very important reminder uh, brother Abdul you brought something up that I think is very uh, uh, worth uh, worthwhile to mention uh, we as Mufti Meek was saying have an unfortunate uh, unfortunately have some unhealthy un-Islamic habits that we celebrate during this time including uh, you want to talk about the visiting graves yes yeah. yes i think i think uh, one of the main things of uh, the, the the customs of uh, celebrating uh, eid here in egypt mm -hmm. is by visiting graves uh, exactly at the second day of eid mm -hmm. which is i think is a big bid'ah uh, because uh, eid is suppo supposed to be uh, 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 days of entertainment or celebrating after mm. a month of forgiveness. Bida? Yeah, in like innovation, oh. something new. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I think I think uh, uh, graves are not uh, the purpose. Uh, to, like it's it's sunnah to visit graves, but at least not at the 
at the time, at the time of the Eid celebration. Yes, yes that's Brother right. Habibur, is this an issue in Bangladesh, people visiting the graves of the ones and their family, friends that have passed on? Uh, of course, this is the custom in Bangladesh. Mm. In the day of Eid, mm -hmm. after prayer, after prayer till night, midnight, mm -hmm. they have to visit each other, graves or friend. And uh, they, uh, in Bangladesh, the people, this is their culture, our culture. We must visit each other. Mm. Like I have friends, after I pray, I make a group from the field of prayer, praying. Then I make a group, then I like, uh, four or five or more than more more people we have group we go to every every friend's house yeah we go then we visit and we eat some uh, mm. sweet okay it's uh, especially in my country the sweet is uh, uh, vermicelli you know vermicelli is very famous in my country mm -hmm. vermicelli we have uh, many kinds of vermicelli and we made it uh, with uh, sugar yes. and milk at this bar Michele. And uh, uh, our sister and our mother, they cooked is very delicious. Shelly, uh, <coughs> this is the thinly spun uh, yeah. sweet food, yeah? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. We have many kinds of like that. So mm -hmm. after prayer, we go to, uh, we make a group, then every friend go to every friend's house, mm. then we eat it. Mm. After that, we have the time for cooking. So we have, uh, many kinds of uh, food uh, the uh, our mother our sister they uh, they make this uh, food uh, like we have uh, uh, what we have uh, biryani. biryani biryani is famous in my country in indian subcontinent biryani uh, it's made with uh, the uh, uh, the meat of cow mm -hmm. okay? okay and uh, maybe kitchen too uh, uh, and we have many different food but our food is delicious, very delicious, and mm. it's exp <laughs> yeah, 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 spicy food. Ah, so you know, Bangladeshi food, uh, Bangladeshi is, spicy food, food mm. is spicy food. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes uh, yeah, I, I, I saw my many friends in, from a different country in, in Egypt, they cannot eat it uh, because of the spice. <laughs> but yes. if they first time they can, uh, who can eat it? Yeah. He is very, uh, means he's uh, very delicious and he wants again, mm. something mm -hmm. like that. Mm. So the visiting uh, uh, the each other house, each other visiting is the custom, is the main custom in my country. So, so this is a very natural thing mm -hmm. for us to extend this practice of visiting one another mm -hmm. to those that we love that have passed on. Mm -hmm. But we're reminding ourselves that we sh we yeah. yeah, actually, see, uh, the point he raised is very, very important, okay. uh, given to the fact that he talks about the innovation <coughs> of Islam. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there are some Islamic scholars who have different point of view okay. about this. Uh, there is one, two things that we have to come to consensus about. Okay. Number one, it is allowed and it is sunnah, it is prophetic tradition to visit the graves. All right. Prophet Muhammad in a very sound and authentic hadith of Bukhari say that you should visit mm -hmm. because it is going to remind you of death. Mm -hmm. And remembering death means that you will be doing good because you know that in one day you will meet Almighty Allah. However, confining this visitation to a particular day in which the day that we should be, you know, showing our happiness, joy, right. and, you know, it should be somehow something to front about. Okay. This is why some people say that it is okay because it is open. You can visit any Anytime, day you want. Yeah. Mm. And some people say that, so frown at it, saying that, no, you should not do it in that particular day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The point is that if you say no, you don't have any prophetic tradition that say no one should go in that day. Yeah. It is only an attemptation or is a trying in order to like justify it by saying each day 
is the day of happiness and we must not delve it into mm. sadness or something mm. like that mm -hmm. but uh, visitation to see or to remember the days mm -hmm. I remember the Almighty Allah mm -hmm. remember meeting him and that there is a day of resurrection is very very important something very important happens in Nigeria particularly my friend mentioned something in Bangladesh yeah I happened to taste some of their food mm -hmm. I liked it you know later but the first day I tasted it was <laughs> hell on earth so to speak. <laughs> but I, I I finally realized that it was very very wonderful mm. okay we have something like this in Nigeria particularly in northern in southern part of Nigeria okay. where you can see some soup made of pepper you understand and that one if you eat definitely you will never try to eat it again but I assure you that after 24 hours you would like to go back to it, mm. <laughs> okay? So we have this thing in in tr in Yoruba tribe in southern part of Nigeria and so on. We normally do this during Eid. Mm. Nice. Yeah, that's that's. I, I think uh, uh, you just made uh, a great point, and you specified it uh, like uh, based on the jurisprudence that actually. Uh, there is no uh, specific saying from Prophet Muhammad uh, to uh, forbid even uh, uh, visiting uh, graves uh, during uh, Eid. Eid. Eid yeah. uh, but specifying uh, these days of happiness mm. uh, to uh, connecting, to connect with your uh, uh, like you see, the family, yes, friends. Uh -huh. uh, that's that would be even better to to connect uh, with those who are alive I think and celebrate mm, real mm -hmm, cele mm -hmm. real celebration mm -hmm. it will be yeah. a sort of uh, kinship celebrate among the living yes yeah uh, will be even a sort of kinship which mm. Prophet Muhammad uh, always encouraged us to to do it there's 50 other weeks yes so yeah the point is well made uh, mm. so it, and it's a good one like you said mm. uh, and there are a lot of even Mufti Mink talked about being excessive in you know uh, celebration celebration and mm. our food and all mm -hmm. this thing and you know each year we have to remind ourselves that over consuming over purchasing from the begin with leads to wasting right and so this exactly. is something to avoid mm -hmm. yeah also yes. Brother Habibur, we mm. want to come back to you and okay. Bangladesh. Tell us more about the, the Islamic uh, traditions in, in Bangladesh. Uh, well, uh, if I compare between the Arabic countries and my country mm -hmm. about Eid, about performing the Eid prayer, we have a special field for Eid, performing Eid prayer. We don't pray in the mosque. With, uh, without, uh, if the uh, weather is rain, we have to go to the mosque. But if the weather is good, mm -hmm. it's okay, we must pray in the field. We have a special field for praying. Mm -hmm. After praying, <coughs> uh, before prayer, what, what we usually do about cloth, if, you, uh, if I talk about cloth, we have uh, mm, uh, before eat the most of the people. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt okay. you. Is it correct? that the second largest congregation of Muslims every year is in Bangladesh, is that correct? Yes. What's oh. the name of this event and which day does it occur? Oh, uh, what do you mean? When does this congregation uh -huh. uh, uh, occur? When does it happen? Is it during Eid? No. No. When is it? I mean, uh, I don't understand that well. Uh, the congregation, mm -hmm. you have largest or second largest congregation. Okay. In, after Indonesia, oh, precisely, yeah, 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 then yeah. followed by it. Bangladesh. I got it. No, no. Uh, when does it happen? Uh, yeah, you got it. Yeah, so, I got so it. Of course, it of course uh, Umrah and Hajj, mm -hmm. these are the large, I mean, we see, I think just last week, two million people mm -hmm. uh, yeah. were there for the... Uh, uh, the prayer. The, the I got it. Okay. We have uh, uh, every year we have uh, it called uh, gathered people, the Muslims, religious people. Mm, it names uh, Tablik Ijtema. Mm. It's in uh, uh, capital city, mm -hmm. Dhaka, Dhaka in Gajipur. Mm -hmm. Gajipur, uh, we have this Tablik Ijtema 
a lot of to a lot of people they they uh, meet there they gather there after Hajj after Hajj after Hajj uh -huh. this is the famous in my country okay mm -hmm. so it's, 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 we've got a, a few more weeks yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to this event yes, we'll yes. look out for it <laughs> uh, it, it should come after Hajj uh -huh. and it happens in the capital Dhaka mm -hmm. all right the the second largest uh, location yes, for yes. a gathering of Muslims yeah, yeah, the following yes. Saudi yes. 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 Arabia uh, okay, so you were talking okay, about, about, uh, about clothing. Clothing, yeah. Clothing is yes, very interesting. <laughs> yeah. really interesting. Before Eid, most of the people, uh, not most, I mean, uh, maybe uh, every Muslim, this is the custom, they must have the new cloth for mm. Eid. So if you go to the market, you will see very jump the market for a clothing market. And we have grocery market. A lot of people they shopping for Eid. After that, in the in the morning, every uh, every man or children mm. they uh, the custom they have to wearing this cloth like this. Yeah. His name is Punjabi. Punjabi. Punjabi in Banjabi. my country. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. We can we pause on Punjabi. Come back to Punjabi. We're gonna continue to circumnavigate the globe and look at uh, continue to look at uh, Eid celebrations around the, the Ummah. <laughs> Muslims around the world are celebrating a holiday called Eid al-Fitr, marking the end of the holy month of Ramadan and bringing communities together. It brings Muslim Ummah all over the world. Kenyans come together without any barrier of religion. They come together to share that bond of relationship. You know, that is what makes Eid special. In Beijing, Thousands flock to the city's biggest mosque for the Eid ceremony. For Muslims, Eid is also a time for prayer. Today I'm taking my child to the mosque to feel the atmosphere of Eid. A lot of Muslims came here from all over. There's a festive atmosphere, a feeling of unity. It's also a time for Muslims to reflect, to be thankful for what they have, and to remember those who are less fortunate. The message of Eid to all Muslims is that they should be united and remember their Palestinian brothers. We should not forget about them and pray for them. After Eid prayer, Muslims usually do rounds visiting friends and family over the three-day holiday or call distant relatives to wish them a happy Eid. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to uh, Eid Times. Uh, before this report, Brother Habibur, you were talking to us about Banjabi, is that mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Yes, please continue. Uh, well, uh, for men, for men, we, uh, in the, before go to the pray, we use this Punjabi, mm. uh, many colors, uh, white or red or many colors Is it of like Punjabi. What you're uh, like me, yeah, yeah ah, I'm okay. wearing like the mm. same. Uh, so the, this Punjabi is very famous. This uh, we call this Islamic uh, Islamic uh, cloth, mm. but even nor nor non-Islamic or Islamic, every mean uh, any Muslim, they uh, customly, they traditionally, they uh, wearing this and go to the pray. Mm. About uh, women, <coughs> they have uh, shari. We have shari for women. Uh, this is a covering for yeah yeah women. they cover the whole body mm. its name is shari it's shari. too okay. famous in my okay. country the women they used to uh, they usually wear this shari and the eighth day and uh, for women another cloth its name is salwar kamis salwar kamis uh, they wear it and uh, the ladies they decorate their one hands with Hina. Hina. Ah, yeah. Okay. Both hands or? Yeah, no, just one, one hand. Which left or right? Uh, left. Left. Okay. Yeah. They, uh, and, uh, and they are very enjoy mm, with it. The if, uh, mm. uh, like I have sister, I have to buy Hina for her. If I not buy, I, if I not give her, she will very sad. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and if I give her, she will very happy and say thank you, uh, brother, <laughs> something like yeah, that. Yeah, there are many things that are uh, <laughs> slightly different, but this is one thing that I'm sure we all uh, uh, experience. Uh, mm. uh, we ha we're approaching the end of our segment, uh, so I want you to start to formulate you know, your final uh, comments 
uh, your greetings to the Ummah, uh, and anything else that you want to share with us. Uh, your last words, uh, brother. Okay, uh, I, I, uh, at, at last, I want to, I want to uh, uh, give the Eid greeting yes. again, mm. Eid Mubarak, mm. and uh, one message very important from uh, very important. I would like to tell for every Muslims, this is the Eid day for us, is the ha for happiness. Okay, but the main point for Eid is forgiveness. Mm. Because we uh, we live in community, mm -hmm. and sometimes we get problem between us That's between right. in in the society. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have any problem, we don't talk with anyone. We, go, we got any problem in society. So in the Eid day, we must forgive each mm -hmm. other. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the message. Yeah, it's a great tradition, and you know we hope, inshallah, we can yes. all be forgiven by yeah, of course. Allah subhanahu wa taala. Uh, Brother Lukman. Mm. I think the interesting thing that uh, that that I look at when I uh, analyze or when I try to look at our tradition in our country about the greeting in our country, I mean in 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 Arab country we used to to greet to, to each other in the day of it just only to say. Every year you are in good condition and so far and so on, or Eden side. But in our country, there is something different. We, we don't just say Eid al Fitri, happy Eid, but we have to say Mohon Ma'af Lahir Batin. It means that you should forgive me my mm. sin. Mm. So, I mean, there is sort of asking for forgiveness and to let to let yourself to forgive others. Mm. This is, I mean, something beautiful thing in our country. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we have a, a very mm. uh, similar message. Yes. Uh, Brother uh, Ali. Yeah, they are actually, there are two things, I suppose. Uh, mm. Number one, the issue of the fact that uh, Muslim Ummah have a golden chance always, mm. all the time, to come together. Yeah. You know, you can see people from different corner and cavity, from Africa, Asia, Europe, all over the world, right. celebrating one thing in one day. Mm. This one is very, very vital, and I consider it a golden opportunity to come together. Yeah. And this is a power. Power. Unity is power. Mm. Together we stand, divided we fall. And, and, this and I'm sorry to mm. interject, mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promises that all human beings, you know, will be uh, uh, under the, uh, uh, will, Im will eventually embrace uh, the Islamic. Uh, Islamic e exactly, exactly. Mm. So when we are united, and Almighty Allah said it like you alluded, you know, we mm. do all our things together. The prayers, we do them in congregation. We do Hajj together. We do fasting together. So it's a golden chance for us to come together, unity and cooperation. Mm. And another thing is the issue of forgiveness. You forget about religious issue. Psychologically, when you forgive, you are more relaxed psychologically. When you bear no grudges against anyone in your mind, the grudge that you are bearing is a, le is a label against you, yeah. not against the man you That's are angry right. with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you allay it, when mm -hmm. you forgive, when you forgive and forget, mm. you will get psychologically more relaxed. Mm. So let's try to forget each other, yeah. to forgive, sorry, each other, so that Almighty Allah will find it to forgive all us right. more. Almighty Allah, accept our deeds and forgive us. Inshallah. Inshallah. All Inshallah. right. Yeah. Brother uh, Abdu, uh, please, uh, if you have one more song, we'll end uh, with, <laughs> with your voice. Yeah. I think, I think uh, your brother said uh, very bull bullet points uh, on that. Uh, Indeed. Like, yes, mm -hmm. uh, as a summing up. Uh, I would I'd just say a song that would uh, just uh, as an expression for the feeling of what's going on in the, the weak uh, countries, uh, Islamic countries, um, that I wish uh, just to like. Every day we tell each other that this day will be, will be the last and tomorrow 
We all can go home free, and all this will finally end. Palestine, tomorrow will be free. Palestine, tomorrow will be free. No mother, no father, to wipe away my tears. That's why I won't cry, I feel scared. But I won't show my fears. I keep my head high, deep in my heart. I'll never have any doubt that Palestine tomorrow will be free. I saw those rockets and bombs shining in the sky like drops of rain in the sun's light taking away every wonder to my heart destroying the dreams in a blink of an eye what happened to our human rights what happened to the sanctity of life and all those other lies i know that i'm only child but is your conscience still alive Oh, I will caress with my bare hands every precious grain of sand, every stone and every tree. Cause no matter what they do, they can never hurt you. Cause your soul will always be free. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah, very beautiful. <laughs> That's good. Uh, and uh, thank you for all your songs and for being thank with you. us. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Ramadan to you. Uh, and thank you for being with us. Uh, Brother Aliyu of uh, Falalu of Nigeria, thank you. Brother uh, Lukman uh, Hakim of Indonesia. Brother Habibur uh, Rahman of Bangladesh. And Brother uh, Ab uh, Abdu uh, Adam of yes. Egypt. Thank you so much for so all. Much. Happy Eid. Thank Happy you so Eid. much. Thank Eid. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.